For people that don't know Viola Spolin, uh, she's gotten the title of the mother of improv, the high priestess of improv. Can you tell us why she would have gotten that title? Well, um, I think it's because a lot of the work that is being done is, now is um, built on the foundation that she created. Um, the games that she created back in God, starting probably in the 1920s at Hull House, um, you know, and that she built on through the decades of her life, um, were all about accessing intuition. Um, her goal was to, um, you know, she was very, she was very, uh, her point was to remove barriers, removing any barrier um, that to true expression or to true um, experience. And, you know, she was heavily influenced by uh, the progressive education movement and heavily influenced by Neva Boyd and all the work she was doing at Hull House and what was going on politically. Like, uh, I know this is kind of a deep dive into like, you know, but it's foundational to her methodology is her experience um, uh, during the 1920s and what she, what, what was going on politically and what was going on um, with the students that she was teaching at the time. It was all about freedom and democracy and what is democracy and um, how do we access um, uh, these skills to remove the barriers to true experience. She felt, she loved theater too. She wasn't just a social worker. A lot of people wanna, wanna kind of make her like, oh, she taught children and she was this, or you know, she was a social worker, but she was, she was that, but she was also uh, a philosopher, an innovator. And she was constantly trying to come up with new tools, new ways to um, pull out the intuition from the player. And every game that she created, over 200 of them, that are used now, and my names have might have changed, you know, people have adapted them um, for performance, like to be performative, because they weren't necessarily performative in the beginning. Um, it was all about accessing that intuition and being able to pull something true um, onto the stage. And what I found interesting in your documentary is something that that I, I you know, I wasn't conscious of, and I've been teaching this for a while, is that she really felt that through play, you could unblock yourself. Yeah. She felt that play was the one thing that um, put the brain, that judging part of your brain on hold. When you play, your self-consciousness goes away. And if you, and she never, she never called her, anybody actors. She always called them players. Um, she didn't call herself a teacher because she, in her mind, to be free, you had to be free from um, hierarchical barriers too. Like um, that's why her her teaching methodology she called non authoritarian and non judgmental or not not non verbal because you learn through doing. So um, I feel like she gets credit in some ways now, but I feel like she's kind of been left like the the real philosophy of the work, which was pretty esoteric. Um, it gets kind of like pushed aside because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to explain why a game where you're playing gibberish and speaking gibberish to somebody um, is like useful. You know, a lot of people think it's silly. Um, I had people that I would work with and they think these games are stupid or that they're not, they're not, you know, do, doing anything. And I'm like, what they're doing is so, so, um, uh, God, what, it's just so intuitive. Um, that you don't even know it's happening. So to play was to be free from the sensor, the mental sensor, um, so that you can really uh, access spontaneity. Jimmy, Jimmy Corain, Jimmy Corain's a nerd. Jimmy Corain's an improv nerd. Jimmy Corain's a nerd. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy Corain's a nerd. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Corain's an improv nerd. Jimmy Corain's a nerd.